Honestly, I just want to let the world know, you know, how sorry I am for my actions. And, you know, it was, it's been a tough time for me. And I'm extremely embarrassed because of that video. Kareem, we've all seen the videos. You've seen the videos. Uh, I think it's fair to say that many would would say that those images, they speak for themselves. What What is there for you to say? I'm, I'm definitely not that type of person. And uh, my mother raised me right. I was raised by my mom and my grandma. And uh, it was just us. And they've always taught me well. And I know right from wrong. And I'm always a person who want to see and make everybody happy. So that is Kareem Hunt speaking with ESPN's Lisa Salters via the video that came out last Friday showing him pushing and then kicking a woman in the face in the hallway of an Ohio hotel. I believe that even was the team hotel. So he got released, he has been put on the exempt list. He is also being, at least the NFL is looking into possibly giving him more time for even another separate offense. But the case that we have here is how the NFL and its repeated history that we're about to display as Robert Latal is here, CEO of Black Sports Online, about how the NFL has turned a complete eye to caring about domestic violence. So here's what ESPN put. In its investigation into the February assault that cost Kareem on his job, the NFL did not interview who? Kareem Hunt or the woman he shoved and kicked. Already off to a terrible start. How do you not even try to interview Kareem Hunt when he is the accuser and the woman who ESPN says uh, NFL reached out to? Again, we're going to show you how they kind of don't care about this entire subject. But how do you not even? How do you not force Kareem Hunt into an interview? And I mean, I think that's it's two different issues here. You got the action, mm -hmm. right, which I think we all don't condone. Yes, but then you have the NFL and the Chiefs reacting to something that they should have taken care of beforehand. Mm -hmm. If the NFL really does an investigation, the Chiefs do an investigation, they come out and say, hey, this is what Kareem Hunt did. This is what we found out. He's suspended for six games to start the season. Mm -hmm. That When the video comes out, nobody is shocked. And right. Everybody kind of moves on with their life. Right. And Kareem Hunt has his punishment. They look proactive. Mm -hmm. And there you go. But by doing this, now I think... It's, I don't want to say it's unfair to Kareem Hunt because, you know, obviously he did what he did, but the process is unfair. And if you're, say, Ezekiel Elliott, <laughs> you say, wait a minute, I got suspended six games. There's no video. There's a lot of your own investigator said the person was lying on me. What if Kareem Hunt only gets six games? Those, these things are not equal. Mm -hmm. But then if you're Tyreek Hill or Joe Mixon or, you know, Ben Roethlisberger, you know, it's no consistency or Josh Brown, for example. Which we'll get into in a moment. You know, it's, there's no consistency. So when you're doling out punishment, mm -hmm. everybody can always come back and say, well, Kareem Hunt and Ezekiel Elliott both got six games or seven. You know, he got one more game than Ezekiel Elliott for two totally different type of things. Mm -hmm. It's not consistent. And I think that's where people get frustrated with the NFL. Now, when the Chiefs, at least as they were, as they... Mm -hmm. So in a total PR spin on Friday, we're saying this is the first time we've ever seen it, blah, blah, blah. They released Kareem Hunt. But here is where the Chiefs are also trying to get in the good graces of the public. Via The Athletic, the Chiefs, according to multiple league sources, new video evidence of the altercation existed, but they were told by the NFL to stop pursuing it later in February once the league began its investigation. So this is pretty much like the FBI going into a crime scene and telling the local police, we got it from here, and the local police being like, oh, well, what are we supposed to do to stop pursuing it? So the Chiefs learned of Hunt's altercation after it became public through two police reports, neither of which included anything about Hunt kicking the woman. In the months that followed, the Chiefs asked Hunt multiple times to be completely true. Truthful, and he said, I never left the hotel room. I didn't do a thing. That's what he told the Chiefs. Now, let's go back in time here. Let's go back and look at when the NFL reviewed, I don't know, Ray Rice when he was with the Baltimore Ravens that you're seeing via the Baltimore Sun. TMZ said an employee of the hotel, which recently closed, claimed that the NFL saw the video from inside the elevator before it suspended Rice for two games in July. 
Now then, we come full circle. The league also declined to say if any of its investigators had seen the video and why it had not requested the video from the hotel where the assault was recorded by security cameras. Robert Mueller, remember him, yeah. was put on this entire investigation about Ray Rice, and here's what he concluded. There was substantial information about the incident, even without the in-elevator video, indicating the need for a more thorough investigation. The NFL should have done more with the information it had and should have taken additional steps to obtain all available info about the incident. So already, they botched the Ray Rice situation, the NFL did, where he struck his then fiance, Janae Palmer, in an Atlantic City elevator, and many were even calling for Roger Goodell's firing at this point in time. It's, it's, it's very, like I said, it's the consistency and the hypocrisy of it all. You know, Ray Rice, they knew he punched. And, and you know, to me, like, I'm not trying to say two wrongs and make a right or all of this stuff, right? But there's a big difference between literally punching and knocking your fiance unconscious and dragging her out of a, you mm -hmm. know, a hotel elevator mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, kind of pushing and, and whatever was happening with, you know, Kareem Hunt. You know, neither are great. One, to me, is a lot worse than the other. Two games. And they saw it. Mm -hmm. So everything that the NFL says and the team say, you have to take with a grain of salt Completely. because yes. you get the feeling that they're only saying it because it's just like anything. Like if you're cheating and your girl is like, hey, have you cheated on me? Like, no, I, I never left the house. And then... You know, she finds the video of you cheating. Now all of a sudden you, well, you know, my boy took me out. I was drugged. You know, it's right, like it's right. always a, an after effect, and that's how the NFL handles these, you know, these situations. Right. So they continue to botch it, and they continue oh. to move the goalposts in their own favor when really they're just hurting themselves. And then we have the case of, as Robert indicated, Josh Brown, who kicked for the New York Giants. Now, in case you need a quick refresher, here it is in video form. Take a look. The kicker was suspended for week one of this season after a domestic violence incident in May of 2015. Then earlier this week, new police documents surfaced in which Brown admitted to mentally and physically <clears throat> abusing his now ex-wife. Now those documents became av available when King County prosecutors decided not to charge Brown in the case. However, the NFL placed Brown on the commissioner's exempt list. The Giants announced the news that they had released Josh Brown, parted ways with a player that many thought that they never should have given a second chance to. It's a humongous problem. Thank you to Katie Nolan for that piece. So it was a humongous problem that occurred. And here is the bow on all of this. Documents were released that showed Brown admitted to abusing his wife, even calling her my slave. The NFL claimed it had never seen the documents and reopened its investigation, blaming the sheriff's office, and the sheriff's office fired back. John Sheriff John Urquhart did admit that King County turned away phone calls requesting more info about an active case, but said that the calls came from someone who never revealed they were investigating for the NFL. We had no idea who this yokel is. I'm a yokel. <laughs> Great insult, great professional insult. So, yeah. yeah. He also said the NFL never once submitted a formal public records request. Right. If the office knew it was the NFL calling, the sheriff said he would have been more willing to assist. And as Michael McCann even puts this out, Lastly, Kareem Hunt, the NFL didn't interview him. Recall how the NFL reacted to Deflategate, hired a small army of attorneys who spent many billable hours interviewing 66 witnesses, writing a 139 page report, hired exponent for experiments, and an 82 page science report. Do you see the difference? The NFL cares more about deflating footballs than they do about the members of their own professional league laying hands on and assaulting women. That is where we are with the Roger Goodell regime. Yes, they have made a ton of money. They have glorified fantasy football to a degree that it's almost exploded with daily fantasy and the way that they have marketed their product has been well done, okay? I applaud him for that. What we cannot ever understate is how Roger Goodell because he has anointed himself, wow. as we do remember, judge, jury, and executioner in all of these situations, continually saying that we don't care as long as it's not on video. It's a it's a billion dollar you know business, uh, multiple billions. Uh, they can get stuff, you know. TMZ, you know, Harvey and them, they they make a good amount of money. But mm -hmm. the NFL, there are always ways. You know, somebody's always totally. willing to hand over the tape. And like I said, it's just very difficult for me to believe anything that the NFL or the teams say. I mean, the Chiefs right now have a guy on their team that is on record pleading guilty to beating a pregnant woman, <laughs> okay? I don't care if they got back together, 
All right. Nothing that I saw in the Kareem Hunt video is as worse as beating a pregnant woman where she had serious injuries and you plead guilty to it. Mm-hmm. Get second chance. And I'm all for a second chance. That Kareem Hunt should get a second chance. I'm not taking a shot at Tyreek Hill. I'm saying it's just very hard for me to you to say, you know, we, we got to get rid of Kareem Hunt because the tape came out. And, hey, let's uh, promote Tyreek you know, Hill for Pro Bowl. You know, you knew that. He pleaded guilty. You knew it. Mm-hmm. You still drafted him. You still took him. You still let him get a second chance. Now, all of a sudden, something comes out, which is totally not as bad, in mm-hmm. my opinion. And he has to go immediately. That's all because of public, you know, perception. I think it's rough to compare Mm -hmm. because I think just no matter what, if any athlete, it doesn't matter what the sport, they put their hands on a woman, Mm -hmm. on a woman, and assault that woman. They should never play another down. See, that's my saying. They should. They. they, 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 And (laughs) the bare minimum for me should be a full season suspension. See, that. that, that, I guess that's my point. Is right now it's. It's just, it all depends on when it happened, where it happened, if there's video of it happened, uh, there are photos of what happened. Because obviously police reports and things like that, the NFL don't care about. Mm-hmm. So are you going to, if you really care about domestic violence, should it be one and done, like you said? But if it's one and done, it needs to be one and done for everybody. I agree, yes. If you plead guilty or you take a plea deal and anything that says that I, you know, are acknowledging that I did something to a woman, should that be it? Yes. Because if not, yes. that's what I'm saying. Because if not, what you're going to have is, you know, the Ezekiel Elliott's and the things. Like, to me, that like Ezekiel Elliott is different because he never he never was charged, didn't plead to anything. But if you're saying I did it mm-hmm. and I took this time or I took this plea deal or it's video, should it be one and done? Then they, I don't think they would have any issues with all. Here's that. here's my last point, and then mm-hmm. we got to get mm-hmm. uh, we got to get to some basketball talk. But what is troubling to me is that we are questioning the morality of an immoral leader right. on this very subject. Mm-hmm. So it's it's almost like we're beating a dead horse mm-hmm. here because they're never going to change. Right. They've shown the consistency under this regime of a commissioner that they do not care and will not and care. And remember, Kyle Kaepernick doesn't have a job. Yep. Not for, you know, didn't beat anybody, didn't, didn't beat break anybody. any crime, nope. uh, didn't, didn't commit any crimes. You know what I'm saying. But right. Reuben Foster is still going to be employed. Exactly. And probably Kareem. And probably Kareem. And a whole bunch of other ones that are already still there. Very much so. YouTube.com slash TYT Sports. Do you know what you could get for $4.99? Maybe one pack of Skittles. You know what's better? A lot of content. So download the TYT app, available on iOS and Android.